I'm Rudy Kosky in Austin. I'm Stephen Dial in Dallas. I'm Greg Grugan in Houston, and this is Texas The Issue Is. Compassionate Use Expansion. The, te the Texas Compassionate Use Law was originally passed in 2015. At the time, access to low-dose marijuana was very limited, but the law was expanded in 2019 and again in 2021. When the legislative session begins in January, state lawmakers may consider another expansion, this time to include chronic pain. I spoke to Morris Denton, who owns one of the few legal medical marijuana dispensaries in Texas, if another change can happen when the political landscape is so divided. I think that we have in, been in this moment for a while, and I think the upcoming legislative session is going to be a real powerful opportunity for the Republican Party to embrace medical cannabis as a uh, true and meaningful way forward to help uh, you know, change lives of thousands of Texans. Right now there is a list of what medical marijuana can be used for. The thought is, is that that list may be expanded to chronic pain. Are you confident we can get there come January? I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. What's real interesting, Rudy, is that you know, of all the conditions that have been approved for medical cannabis, um, none of those conditions have as much scientific evidence that support the efficacy of medical cannabis on, uh, on a condition as chronic pain does. Meaning chronic pain has far and away more scientific evidence that supports how medical cannabis can help with inflammation, with pain, uh, without having a lot of the significant serious issues like an opioid would present. Broad polls say the majority of Texans favor the use of marijuana for medical purposes. But you're not interested in the broad numbers, are you? You're looking at more of a specific number. What are you looking for? The people that are controlling the legislative agenda are the Republicans. And so the polling numbers that we look for are how does this issue reflect and, and magnify within the Republican Party? And what are you seeing? We're seeing tremendous support. We're seeing tremendous support. We're seeing upwards of 70 plus percent. Of Republicans. Of Republican primary voters. Those polls were done before the president made his decision in regards to marijuana, doing a mass pardon for first time uh, for simple possession, and then also wanting to relook and rethink of the scheduling of marijuana. Does that help or hurt now? I think in today's political climate, it may have a little bit of a near term sort of woe, you know, from the Republican Party, because unfortunately, you know, I think that there's this partisanship that exists that creates a posturing, you know, where if you're a Republican and I'm a Democrat, you might be for daylight savings and I'm gonna be opposed to daylight savings and it almost becomes like a battle over something that's relatively mundane. Medical cannabis should not be a political partisan issue. There's some individuals in the medical community that say this needs to stay in the medical community. We don't need the broad opening of total legalization. Uh, it's been described as other states doing that as a social experiment. Where do you stand on that? Should this be sold just like a can of beer? When we look at what's happening in other states, particularly in, in neighboring states, you know, I think there's a good justification for the reason why Texas has gone the way that it has, which is a little bit slower. You know, Texas hasn't gotten so far out ahead of its skis that it's created a lot of issues. Um, but I really view that this is a strong opportunity to create a very strong medical program here in Texas. When the hearings, and if there are hearings that take place uh, when the session starts in January, what are the landmines that you're seeing that are, that are gonna be uh, coming? Yeah, well, I mean, the landmines are the same ones that we faced before, which is, you know, you have someone that unfortunately is entrenched in a point of view. And old facts die hard. Because this isn't just about some hippie getting high. This is a person who's feeling pain, and these plants may be the answer? Yeah, but this is true. And there's power and truth in the reality of medical cannabis. And when you go from having hundreds of seizures a day to having no seizures, and you can go to college and you can get a car and you can drive and you can be self-sufficient, that is transformative. In this age of fentanyl, opioid overdoses, is this the answer or is it part of the answer? I, you know, I, I struggle with anything that's positioned as the answer. You know, medical cannabis, just like any other form of medicine, is a treatment, it's not a cure. And as much as we'd like to think that it's a silver bullet for people suffering from 
epilepsy or MS or spasticity or chronic pain. It doesn't work for everyone, but it works for a lot of people. But it should be a solution that is generally available for medical doctors uh, in the state of Texas. In one word for me, that interview was potluck. Stephen, what's your word? I'm going to pull a Rudy with a hyphenated word, green ripple. Greg, what is your word? Is it a hyphen? No hyphen here. Indisputable is my word.